Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to a new video. Uh, in this video, it's just a continuation from the previous video. I I'm probably going to end up releasing this just a few days after my previous one, so it should be the last one um, uh, before this. Um, effectively, the video was talking about a lock-on system for a single target. Um, I what I've done is, I, I couldn't help myself, I've built onto that a little bit more and turned it into a multi-hit, which I'll demonstrate in just a minute. Um, all of the blueprint remains the same from the previous one, um, with the exception of um, I've, I've set up sort of like a, a target, so then you know you're in targeting mode. Um, all that is is just a little crosser that pops up on the screen, um, and we're just setting whether it's active uh, when we go into targeting and deactivating it when we're not. So a quick example of that is, so if we aim here, uh, we just get a target there which sort of follows where we're going. It's just a visual aid to know that it's active uh, and then it goes away when it's sort of deactive. Um, so for the multi hit, effectively what I've done is I've set up sort of like an area trace which will scan um, sort of across the screen uh, and try and pick up as many enemies as possible. So if I hit control, which is what I've set it to, you can see that it's done sort of like a trace uh, across the screen and it's picked up on um, sort of all of the characters and it's by default I've set it to target the character which is closest to you uh, which I think is going to be helpful and I've set up two ways that you can cycle through it so you can just I've set it up with a Q key but um, you can set it to any key but I can cycle through all of the characters that was in the initial trace the multi hit so you can cycle through those or um, if you're closer to another character, you can press the E key and it'll it'll cycle to the closest character to you. So if I hit E, it's now this one. And if I move back over here, it switches back over to this character. Uh, and same, same again. And then if I hit Control, it deactivates that and you can go back about your day. So uh, let's have a look at the blueprint and see how um, that's been built. Um, so obviously... You're going to need to have watched the original video to sort of get a, an idea of um, how that system worked. Um, I will do a quick fly through overview of this one just in case there is something I've added to this that was missed from the original one. Um, but, it, but I am going to go through it at a, a slightly quicker pace. Uh, so what we're doing, um, we're, so I've set the key to left control. Um, we're going to go into a flip-flop, which is going to do the A route first, and then when you press control again, it's going to go through the B route the second time. Effectively, A starts it and B cancels it. So it's sort of like a click-on, click-off, toggle uh, system. Um, it all starts with a, a line trace, uh, where effectively we get the camera's location, we get a distance from the camera in a forward direction. Um, so my range is 1,500 units. However, instead of a line trace, we're going to be doing a multi-trace. Uh, multi-trace, basically, its output is, instead of just a single trace, it outputs every actor uh, of, a, of a sort of set. Um, so anything that it hits, which meets your criteria, which we'll come to in a minute, um, will be outputted in, in an array. So we can loop through the array and cycle through every actor that it hit and pick out the ones we want to use. Um, so... To really simplify this, I've actually used the multi box trace for objects. Normally, I use by channel because it's usually um, it works, I guess. Um, but for objects, it's just a bit easier because I'm only interested in hitting characters or pawn classes. Um, so by objects is just much easier. Uh, and what I've done is from the object types, I've just dragged off. And if you type in uh, make, you should just get make array. That'll give you this node, and then because it's looking for types of objects, uh, you're going to drop down on the box, and you'll see all the typical object types in, in, in your scene. So I've just selected Pawn, um, and that sort of picks up on any characters or sort of controllable um, actors in your world. So for the multi-box trace, you have a start and an end. That's just a basic line trace. Where am I starting from? Where am I going to? And then the box aspect of it is... It, it's labeled as half size, but effectively this is the box or cube that it wants to project from that line. 
So I've simply gone 600 wide um, and sort of 10 deep, just so it's like a, a kind of uh, a wide, chunky box that goes forward. Um, orientation, I've left as, as zero, so it just follows sort of like the, the camera. And that's pretty much it. I've put the draw debug type on just so we can see it visually. Okay, so from that, like I said, every object that that trace hits is going to be recorded and added to an array. That's the out hits array. So this is an array of hits or hit results. Um, if you've used line traces before, you'll be familiar with hits. So because that gives you an array, um, the first thing that I've done is I'm going to loop through that array. So effectively it goes, let's say that we hit five objects. It's going to it's going to loop through, look at the first object, uh, and that's going to spit out this array element. Um, and then it's going to keep doing that for each element. So you can cycle through each individual element and do whatever you want to it. Uh, so what I've done is for each element, I've braked it. I've braked it. <laughs> I broke the, uh, the hit result again. Uh, so you might be familiar with break hit result from a line trace if you've used it, uh, which we did use on the previous one. But effectively, I'm breaking it, finding the hit actor, and then I've created an array. Let me just pull this over here. Uh, I've created an array of actors. Uh, so I'm adding unique targetable actors. So because I know that I'm finding pawns, I know that this is only going to be spitting out sort of characters. So then I cycle through the list and I only add unique ones. The reason I add unique ones is if I press play and I hit control, you'll notice each person has got about five or six points on the back of them. That's because it's hitting like the arms, the chest, the neck, the spine. It's hitting uh, sort of every bone in that in that section. Um, so if I didn't add unique, you'd be adding sort of like six character one, six character two, six character three. So by adding unique, you're only getting the one instance. So effectively hitting five characters, you should only have five unique actors within the, within your uh, array. Then finally, what I do is I cycle through the targetable actors and the one that is nearest to our uh, our origin which is going to be us so our actor location so the one that's nearest to us is set as the active target i do an is valid there but technically that's probably not necessary at this point but it is a good way of preventing um errors so if i was to do this and i wasn't aiming at any actors um this wouldn't wouldn't continue the active target i cast to a character and i add that as a hit reference uh, the reason to do this is do i actually use this uh, to be honest that's actually redundant i i didn't need to carry that forward so you, you can probably ignore that um set reference unless i do use it no i don't actually use that so uh, that's a bit of redundancy that i've left in there so after we go through, so we've got our active target basically. What we do is we start a timer. We're going to run this at every 0.01 second. Um, that's because we're updating our camera. And if you go any slower than that, your camera movement will be like juddery. Um, it, it, it won't look very nice at all. So set it to that. The reason I'm using a timer is arguably you could use a tick, but... You can't cancel a tick. Once it's running, it's running. Um, you can set up a branch and sort of a boolean to sort of stop it from carrying on. But a timer, you can just say stop and it, you know, it's not running anymore. Um, so I, I prefer to use that. So we set up a timer. Uh, we deactivate the pawn control rotation. Uh, effectively, this just means that when you move your mouse, um, that them instructions are not really going to the controller to move your camera. Uh, because we're going to be telling the system that we're going to manually update the camera. We create a timer handle, which is the return value from the timer. The handle contains um, sort of like the function to clear and invalidate, which is effectively stop. Um, so if we need to stop the timer, we can get a reference to that. 
and then we set our um, our HUD sort of target to active so we know that we're actually in the targeting mode then the timer itself is responsible for setting the camera's rotation to look directly at the targeted player uh, and that's done by getting our eye viewpoint which is basically just um, our our camera's location and then get the actor location so which is the active target so we're using this reference again so this is the actor which is closest to us just to reiterate actor's location i add f whoops get rid of that i add 50 to the z uh, purely so then it's not on the pelvis and it's more around the chest uh, if you want to you could go into cast into it and get in the socket location but it's, it's probably just not worth it we use a fine look at rotation which basically takes in our location takes in the targeted and it gives you a rotation of what you would need to rotate to look at that that feeds into the set world rotation for the camera and also we feed the same rotation into our controllers rotation the reason you need to do this is because the controller needs to be aware of how the um, how your character has moved normally when you move the mouse you use the node uh, set controller your input or pitch input uh, and this tells the controller that we've actually moved because you're doing it yourself um, effectively if you don't call the set control rotation that won't happen um, so if as you're rotating in sort of like orbiting your target your controls will remain as if you wasn't so as you rotate around 180 degrees you'd have to press backwards to move forwards and it'd get really disorientating so that's a must have and to be honest that's pretty much it so most of the work happens with the multi-line trace getting the array of unique actors um, and then finding the nearest one which makes it the active target however so we've got all the all of the actors and then the one which is currently set to active so this is where these two other nodes come in so what i've done here is i'll, I'll probably keep this on the screen for a minute you can pause here but this cycles through so what we do is we get the targeted actor array we find the current active target that gives you the index so let's say this is a list of five things and let's say our active target is number four um this node will basically say well this target is the fourth one in this array what we need to do is a quick check then so from this find we go um is the current target its index within the array is it greater than or equal to the length of the array minus one the reason we do that is because the length of the array will give you let's say it's five long so it will return the length of five the actual number five however the array will go from zero to four it's still five long um but there won't actually be an index of five so we minus one from it so we can sort of set it in perspective of of the actual zero indexing so your array starts at zero we have five of them we take one off it so we get uh, zero to four which is still five anyway if our character is number four um, and we've got a length of five we take one off it this is going to be equal to if that's true we're going to set the targetable actors to uh, sorry the active target to uh, index zero so it's going to be the first person in the list if it's not we're simply going to add one to whatever we found and then set that to the active target and we just do the reverse of that so instead of adding one to it we're going to minus one from it uh, and and we just sort of flip um how this how this works so i've assigned them to q and e so you can cycle through it nicely however um the other version which is basically get the nearest target to us this is much simpler um when i press the e key i find the nearest actor to us so the origin is us get our actor location 
the actors to check. So look through these actors and find which one is the closest to me. And then return that as the active target. So that's actually the simplest one. So um, you can run around the battlefield, hit E, and whichever enemy is the closest to you, it'll snap to them. And to be honest, that is pretty much it. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just keep those on the screen for a second. I, I know that's probably zoomed out quite a bit. Um, but I'll do, I could probably drop that a little bit more. Um, purely just for you to be, to be able to pause. I don't want to have to go through this step by step because, uh, to be honest, we're already at 15 minutes. So um, I hope there's enough freeze frames in here for you to piece this together. If you have any issues running this, um, obviously just let me know. Let me know down in the comments or feel free to join the Discord. Uh, we can discuss this further. I've, I've got a few more ideas of what I think I can do for this. Um, I, I mentioned in the previous video that I'm going to try and work on smoothing out the camera snapping. So I've still got to figure that out yet. Um, I've got a few ideas, but it's whether um, my idea is going to work. It involves using timelines, and I'm not sure that this timer is going to let a timeline run before it jumps. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll work on that. Um, if you've got any other ideas as well, you know, feel free to let me know. I, I feel like I'm going to slowly work towards like a free movement kind of targeting system. Um... Yeah, so um, I'll do another quick demo. So we jump in here, we hit the Q key, uh, we're getting all these actors. You know, you can shoot them, we can cycle through. Oh, we'll pick that one over there. Oh, we'll come back and jump to that one. And that's pretty much it. And then just for a bit of a blooper. Oh, I didn't set it on that one. There you go, we've got loads of. Um, loads of not so healthy actors <laughs> that's pretty much it um i, I kind of stalled myself there at the end uh, if you like this please consider giving me a like um if you want to let me know what you thought about this pop them down in the comments if you've got any ideas that i can bolt onto this or if you've got any ideas that you know completely away from this that you want me to have a look at within unreal you know um don't be shy pop them down in the comments um i reply to almost every comment when YouTube actually notifies me that you've commented, um, I've been having trouble with that recently, but I've started looking at the comments section uh, within the YouTube manager because I feel like that's more reliable than actually waiting for a notification that you have. Either way, I do try and get back to every, every one of you. So I, I'm rambling now at this point, so thank you for watching and I'll see you in another one.